For over 40 years, Cynthia Moss has been studying the elephants of Kenya's Amboseli ecosystem. After first working in 1968 with leading elephant researcher Ian Douglas Hamilton in Tanzania, she teamed up with Harvey Crows and in 1972 started the Amboseli Elephant Research Project. It is the longest running study of wild elephants ever undertaken documenting the lives and deaths of almost 3,000 elephants. Much of what is now known about the complex social structure and lives of elephants is the result of research she and her colleagues have conducted throughout the years. Their observations and insights have profoundly altered the approach to elephant conservation. In December 2014, we paid Cynthia a visit at her camp in Amboseli National Park and joined her on a morning drive in search of some of the elephants she knows so well. And this happens, I mean, we expect, oh, there they are, good, they're still out. At least we'll see something. They're not? Yeah, they're still half asleep. <laughs> Sweet. You gonna come say hello? Look at oh, her. That's a relaxed, right? Yeah, yeah, very relaxed. Yes, you're beautiful. Beautiful girl with nice ears, with nice markings on your ears. Not long after our first encounter, we saw this family nearby. Unlike most vehicles which are restricted to the roads, Cynthia's elephant research vehicle is permitted to go off-road, and so we had the privilege to approach and, from a respectful distance, quietly observe this large family as it made its way to the swamps. Watching this silent parade was almost trance-inducing, as young and old slowly and steadily followed one another. One tiny infant seemed a little confused as it tried to find its way through that forest of legs. It was truly a pleasure to see how relaxed and unperturbed they were. No doubt their familiarity with Cynthia and her Land Rover was the reason for their lack of concern. So the, the matriarch is, is in the back here. That's the matriarch. Yeah, they're often either in the middle or the back. Once in a while they'll be in the front. But most of them have something, something yeah. you know, but like this is a nice, yeah, this no. one has nice. <laughs> but Fanny didn't have much, but she does now have this lump on her ear, so that. Juhuta and Baby and Joe and um, Judith. Elephant ears have unique patterns of nicks, veins, serrated edges, and other marks. That's why with binders of elephant photos in hand, Cynthia can identify hundreds of Amboseli's pachyderms. Although on our drives, she recognized numerous elephants merely on sight. Each family group is assigned a letter of the alphabet, with each member in that group given a name that starts with that letter. Therefore, the J group, for example, has members named Josephine, Judith, and so on. It had been fascinating to see and learn about these elephants, and there was more to come for Cynthia offered to take us on another drive the next morning. Amboseli has a great variety of wildlife, and we enjoyed seeing many other animals, but our focus was on the elephants and the pressures endangering their survival. To address some of these, Cynthia Moss in 2001 created ATE, 
the Amboseli Trust for Elephants, which has initiated various community programs in order to minimize conflict between elephants and the Maasai whose settlements border the park. ATE operations outside the park include employing Maasai elephant scouts who report on injured elephants and conflicts, as well as signs of poaching and the bushmeat trade. One of ATE's most successful programs is its Livestock Loss Consolation Payment Scheme, whereby the Maasai are compensated for loss of cows, sheep, and goats killed by elephants. Previously, Maasai custom dictated an elephant had to be killed in retribution for livestock deaths. The number of elephants speared and killed has dropped by more than half since the initiation of the consolation scheme. We learned some of this during our last drive with Cynthia, who had been most generous with her time for us. I mean, he's a young bull, but I should know who he is. Oh yeah, that's definitely very distinctive ear. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> So I think this is a mixture of IA, IC, and GB. That's who it is. See how their family all comes along now that yeah. gold is here? Yeah. This is beautiful. Gold is just sort of, just, oh, I'm just here. Um, she's very regal, you see. She's not going to say anything, but she just expects them all to come with her. Due to the presence of the Elephant Research Project, as well as tourism and the support of the local Maasai people, Amboseli's elephants had lived relatively undisturbed, with poaching only occasionally disrupting their existence. However, in 2009, poaching increased so alarmingly that acclaimed photographer Nick Brandt, who has photographed elephants extensively in Amboseli, felt compelled to take action. In October 2010, he teamed with renowned Kenyan conservationist Richard Bonham to form Big Life. We were glad to hear from Cynthia that the addition of Big Life's rangers had significantly reduced the threat of poaching in the area. Cynthia Maas and the Amboseli Trust for Elephants continue the vital research needed for improving elephant conservation while the mere presence of ATE in Amboseli and its elephant rangers in the nearby communities provide an important safeguard against poaching. Please consider donating to ATE so that its crucial work and presence may continue. I'm John Kay for the Maui Kay Foundation.